Who are the biggest dynasty winners and losers from week two? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Today's episode of Locked On Dynasty is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy football made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Welcome into the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, everybody. I am Kate Majuk. Senior content creator at the Gaming Society. And as always, I am joined by my fantastic co host, Marcus Mosier. You could find all of his work over at, uh, you know, Casual PFF. Uh, I, Marcus, actually, let's give a quick rundown because you're, you're working at a lot of places and I want to make sure our listeners know where to find your written content. You're uh, everywhere. Yeah. So Lo- help us find your work. Lot on Cowboys, PFF, Forbes.com, uh, gambling.com, bookies.com, bet online. Uh, a lot of different places you can go to get some stuff. But yeah. uh, but that's not what we're talking about today, Kate. We're talking yeah. about winners and losers from week two. And boy, do we have a lot of them. Uh, I feel like we have more winners this week than losers, but let's get do ready you? to do it. I don't I, know. I, I do. I, I've got a couple big, big ones. Uh, you go first. Who was your biggest winner? Uh, biggest winner definitely has to be Noah Brown. Uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. By the way, um, <laughs> we should pat ourselves on the back a little bit. We crushed the promotion commotion segment last week. If you started Joe Flacco because of us or Greg Dorch or Noah Brown, uh, or even Carson Wentz, uh, you're very happy today. So go listen yes. to that segment every Friday afternoon. You are very, very, uh, no, you, you've been right on spot Marcus and we appreciate that. Uh, no, for me, the biggest winner has to be DeAndre Swift, who just continues to look psychotically dominant through two games of football. I, I feel like we were all sort of fading him. And then, Marcus, the number of start sit questions I got this week for DeAndre Swift, he's a little banged up. What can he do? It doesn't matter. DeAndre Swift is is swift. Uh, he's swifting nice. points into our fantasy lineups. Um I, I mean, it, it, the usage is all around there. And what I think is encouraging is that we're seeing fantasy production, despite the fact that Jamal Williams is still involved. Mm-hmm. Um, another shout out. I, I just want to talk about the lions, I guess. I'm on our St. Brown. Who's literally breaking right records. Yes. Like the Detroit lions are looking like a pretty solid football team, but through two games, Amonor St. Brown, 17 receptions, 180 yards, and three touchdowns. Like, dude's a baller. Uh, I mean, okay, this one is starting to get kind of silly, right? So not only in this game did he have 116 yards, uh, nine receptions, and two touchdowns, he also had 68 yards rushing. So, I mean, 184 yards in this game. Okay, in his last eight games, okay, are you ready? He is averaging 110 yards per game and nine touchdowns. So over a touchdown a game. What's crazy to me is that his dynasty value hasn't really shifted all that much. Like he is wide receiver 29 right now. Can you imagine if it was like CD lamb putting up these type type of numbers? We'd be talking about him as the number one wide receiver overall, but because it's a Ross St. Brown, everybody kind of overlooks it. I think that needs to change. Like, I think we need to be talking about him as like a top 12 receiver. Like, let's just do this really quickly. Kate, would you rather have DJ Moore or Mon Ross St. Brown going forward? Oh, we love DJ. Mon Ross St. Brown. Okay. Would you rather have DK Metcalf or Mon Ross St. Brown? Oh God, Marcus, this is disgusting. Um, Well, I'm, like I'm inclined to no no I gotta go DK I gotta go no. DK I I gotta go DK T Higgins wide receiver eight or Amara St Brown I'll still roll T Higgins with that one Okay so you're a little bit a little bit more uh, bearish on Amara St Brown I'm just to the point now where I've seen it for 
eight, nine, ten games where he is just a lock to catch eight passes for 80 yards every week, I'm in. This feels very Cooper Cuppy to me. The Cooper Cuppy. That's a that's an adjective for the ages. Um, I, I actually so Marcus, they posted a um a, a batch of Dynasty ADP for the month of September. So we do have a little bit of a sample size as to how people are evaluating Amon or St. Brown. And he jumped up to wide receiver 17. Still too low. Still, Still too, too low. low. But you know yeah. what, Marcus? Like looking at all of the guys that are ahead of him, like I think wide receiver 17 sounds low based on the production, but looking at the players ahead of him, like you realize wide receiver 17 starts to make a little bit of sense like you're obviously a little bit higher on him you're probably in the wide receiver like 12 range um but i mean like dk metcalf tyreek hill dj moore i think those are all players that are very reasonable to sure. have sure ahead of a monor st brown so that price feels right for the time being does it climb further i don't I, know some more some more disappointing will. games from you know i don't a certain Cowboys receiver who picked it up a little bit this week, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely, yeah. we'll see. Can we do some just kind of rapid fire players that we thought performed well, or their st dynasty stock is rising because we've got uh, some losers to talk about in a second. I I I've got one really quickly. Josh Jacobs, he out touched the other running backs 20 to two uh, in week two. I don't know how long he's going to be the starting running back in, in, in Las Vegas that they bring him back, but it seems like for at least the rest of this year, He's the workhorse guy there. Uh, who else do you have as a winner? Uh, Nick Chubb, absolutely yeah. dominant. He is a psycho. He scores lots of touchdowns, continues to be efficient. I, I just, he is the star of the show. Uh, and sure. Boom. Uh, I, I'd also say Drake London, you know, eight for 86 in this game. Um, thought he looked pretty good last week against New Orleans. I, I think we can be really excited about what the, the future has for Drake London. Um, two more, two more running backs. Uh, how about your own Tony Pollard with the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, didn't feel like he got enough work, but nine rush attempts, 43 rushing yards, a touchdown. Um, we saw him get a little bit more work this week. He looked good. Uh, and I think he's really showing off his skill set in a time where Ezekiel Elliott is yes. not. Yes. Um, I it feels like he's needs to be the starter sooner rather than later there in Dallas. Yeah, but that price tag, baby. I Last know. but not least, I want to shout out James Robinson, who contil continues to dominate on the ground. Marcus, he had the second most rush attempts among all running backs in week two. That is bonkers, bananas, cuckoo crazy for a guy that is returning from a ruptured Achilles. Like, I mean, he wasn't overly efficient with them, right? Like, Still only ended up averaging 2.7 yards per carry, but like, uh, you know, it had a rush, uh, you know, uh, some explosive plays there. And the the Jaguars show no sign of slowing down on James Robinson. I, we have to start valuing him as such. I'm going to save my thoughts in the Jacksonville backfield for just a couple couple seconds because we need to talk about something in that backfield. Uh, but before we do that, I want to tell you about prize picks. Uh, how does it work? How do you do it? It's so simple. All you have to do is pick two to five players. And if they score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They are currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Price Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKDOWN. If you deposit $100, Price Pick will give you $100. If you deposit $50, they will give you $50. Just don't forget to use uh, promo code LOCKDOWN at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, Kate, biggest losers from week two. 
Um, well, I, I think we should segue uh, right over to the Jacksonville Jaguars backfield. I have a feeling that you want to talk about a certain former first round pick. Yeah, Travis Etienne, right? Nine carries for 20 yards. When James Robinson is like doubling your workload coming off that torn Achilles, it's saying something. Uh, Travis Etienne, he did get three receptions for 33 yards in the passing game, but it's just clear that this is going to be a committee at best for Etienne, right? Like, I think at this point, you're hoping for a 50 50 split and for him to get a little bit more work in the passing game. I, I This is tough. It's really tough. It's super tough. And I mean, looking at uh, the the workload here, like you said, he's literally doubling, almost tripling his workload on the ground. And I, I mean, Marcus, we're, we're definitely looking at, uh, you know, a player who's actually not looking quite as fantastic as James Robinson, yeah. which is like almost the more concerning part, uh, was stuffed on 33% of his runs in week two compared to James Robinson stuffed on 20%. Um, didn't have any like explosive plays, um, explosive rushing attempts. Like it is problematic for me, but I will say neither of these guys uh, averaged over three yards per carry in week two. So like neither of them have been super efficient with their workload, mm -hmm. which, but like eyeball test. James Robinson has looked a little bit better on the ground. Yeah, I, I I agree. So it's this is really scary. Like if you drafted Etienne in a redraft league to be your RB two, you're sweating now after two weeks because you might just have somebody who's taking up a roster spot and use the fourth or fifth round pick to to get him. So it's tough. Uh, some other kind of losers from from week two. How about Rashad Penny? I mean, I thought he looked pretty good last week against the Broncos, but in this game, six carries for 15 yards, doesn't even see a target in the passing game. Um, we saw Kenneth Walker get four carries for 10 yards. It just feels like none of these running backs in Seattle are going to be fantasy relevant. And now that Walker's back, I think Penny's almost droppable. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, but like – so as, as in curiosity, Marcus, you're, you're ready to drop Rashad Penny. Are you holding Kenneth Walker? If he's still in your roster in the dynasty, obviously. Yeah. But in redraft, yeah. probably just because you're hoping that eventually Seattle kind of turns it over to him, but it's not great. I, we, we, I think last week maybe spoiled people a little bit thinking that Seattle was going to have one of these super efficient ground attacks, but, it's just not going to happen against better teams. Now, uh, how about we talk about your your darling tight end, your tight end one, Kyle Pitts, 5.8 fantasy yeah. points through two games. Marcus has totaled just four receptions, 38 receiving yards, literally a non-factor, right? And it, you have the head coach coming out after the team drafted him Fourth overall to say this isn't fantasy football. Maybe you get your best player involved. Like Kyle Pitts is the best player on that field. What are the Falcons doing? Why aren't they involving Kyle Pitts? Um, so many questions. And I don't think any of the answers are good for our fantasy teams. Now, here's the, the number of receptions for Kyle Pitts in each of his last four games. Are you ready? Two, two. Two, two. Um, that's rough. In his last three receive or last three games, he has a total of 46 receiving yards. Obviously, no touchdowns. <laughs> I, I mean, can we have the conversation? Is like, is Kyle Pitts one of the most overvalued fantasy assets right now? You know how much I love Kyle Pitts. I think he's a superstar that's on a bad team, but he is, I mean, he's a consensus tight end one right now, and he hasn't given you a tight end one game in months Marcus he is a consensus top five pick yeah not just tight end one a top five pick um yeah and it, it yeah and it feels really awful to say that but it's a hundred percent concerning um but I will say like we generally get so impatient with tight ends right out of the gate 
if this continues to be a problem, like I, I don't think this is a bad trajectory for Kyle Pitts's career, right? No, like, I think if he'll be we fine see, eventually. Eventually, if we see this continued usage uh, and it it's continuing to be a problem, even over the next like week or two, I think that's a buy low opportunity for Kyle Pitts. Because I do think as soon as we see Kyle Pitts looking like Kyle Pitts, that window slam shut. And this might be that opportunity if you were not a manager who was able to get your hands on some shares of Kyle Pitts. Like this is the trade now this, window. This is, that, yep. this is the only time you're going to be able to go buy him in your dynasty league. So uh, shoot in out the some meantime, offers. In the meantime, Kate, though, like if you have Kyle Pitts on your dynasty team, do you have to start him? Mm. But let me give you some options, right? Let's say you have Kyle Pitts and Gerald Everett on your team. Who are you starting next week? Probably Gerald Everett. If, who are you starting, Zach Ertz or Kyle Pitts? Zach Ertz. Tyler Higby or Kyle Pitts? Probably Tyler Higby. It's tough. I mean... Uh, it's tough, do- but every all of those tight ends that you mentioned, Marcus, they are they have been an orchestrated part of the game plan in their respective offenses. Yeah. Kyle Pitts is not. And like we cannot, so this is like a lesson that I want our listeners to remember. We cannot trap ourselves in this cage where we are valuing players for what we value them as and not what they're valued as to their respective offenses and how they're being utilized. Like our dynasty evaluation of Kyle Pitts uh, does not matter to the Falcons coaching staff. Like they don't care and they're going to execute their game plan. Like, but you know, we can't just leave him in our lineup because we think he's really good. We have to be common sense sensical man managers it, it, i don't it, know how do you it, say that okay really quickly though if you own kyle pitts in dynasty right now should you consider trading him away while his value because i I think most dynasty managers are more patient than traditional redraft and they sh- owners and they should be right but if you own kyle pitts right now and you're trying to be competitive this year do you think about moving him for I don't know. Let's say you can get George Kittle and a first round pick or, you know, TJ Hawkinson and a, 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 you know, a really good number two receiver. Like, are you considering that? Because I feel like Kate, if we do go, let's say we go two or three more games and it's, you know, three for 46, five for 50. And there's just not an explosion at some point. His, his value is going to really start to tank. Like if, if we go another month without him being a tight end one in any game, I mean, that's when people are going to really start to get worried. Yeah, but I also think it feels like you're selling low, right? Like you probably paid a premium for Kyle Pitts. If you think that Kyle Pitts is going to eventually regain that value, I don't think you sell. Um, and again, maybe that's dependent on what you're, what stage you're on uh, or what stage you're in for your re- or your dynasty roster. Man, I can't talk today. Uh, week two has me all kinds of scrambled, but like, I, I do think you should be aware that you paid a premium and now you're selling low. It's not, it's not great technique for recouping the best value, but I understand like you got to do what you got to do. I'm trying to hold him in any and all circumstances. I'm trying to buy him if I don't have him on any respective roster. Cause I think Again, this is this is going to be a very small window that we're able to yep. acquire him in. All right, let's uh, let's talk about some injury news, Kate. That's very very depressing. But before we do that, we should tell you about Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want wherever you want it from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Or you can just find an affordable economy car if you're on a budget and you just need to get from A to B. Or if you're like me and you want to test drive that new electric vehicle that you have dry on for a while, uh, you can do that to see how it fits in your everyday life. Many Terra hosts can even deliver the car right to you. 
every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Ditch boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. All right, Kate, let's talk about Trey Lance. Um, the second-year quarterback was injured in week two. Um, he had a it's tough ankle injury. Looks very similar to the one that Dak Prescott suffered in 2020. Um, Kyle Shanahan announced that he's going to go undergo surgery that's going to end his season. Obviously, this is just brutal for the 49ers, but in, in terms of dynasty, which I know we know is not the most important thing here, but this is what we're talking about. How does this impact his dynasty value long term? I mean, this is a huge like I don't think that people um, who are considering Trey Lance and like the the fact that this is probably, you know, just a hopefully a one season injury um, are considering just how detrimental this is. He was QB eight headed into this uh, this like the week basically mm -hmm. and dynasty startup ADP. Now we already were amidst a flurry of questions about Trey Lance and what do you do with Trey Lance and, and what do the 49ers do with Trey Lance? At what point did they turn with, to Jimmy Garoppolo? If Jimmy Garoppolo comes in and wins games for the 49ers, it's a much more complicated situation because do I think Trey Lance was given any sort of shot uh, it, at all in terms of uh, being able to like truly win the starting job at quarterback? No, he's 22 years old. Like, but I do think the 49ers once again have put themselves in a pickle. If Jimmy Garoppolo wins, which is what you want, which he probably will, which he probably will. Cause he's, he's, that's all he's done with the 49ers. Uh, what do you do with Trey Lance at that point? I have to imagine like there's a real possibility that Jimmy Garoppolo continues to win with the 49ers. They re-sign him next year. And what do you do with Trey Lance then? Like, is he as valuable um, in another offense? Like we were so excited for Trey Lance and his potential as a development quarterback uh, because of like the the Kyle Shanahan rushing scheme and how that was going to just completely open the field for Trey Lance. He's not going to get that everywhere. Like, I, I don't know what to do with Trey Lance. Like, I'm in a holding pattern. I have a lot of shares of Trey Lance, and I'm not trading him right now because I, I just don't know. I, I don't know, Marcus. This is like uncharted territory, I feel like. Yeah, I, my guess is that they still keep Trey Lance. They 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 still owe the Dolphins a first round pick in 2023 for Trey Lance. He's on a rookie contract. He still have multiple years of cheap control. I actually think this is the time to maybe go buy Trey Lance when his value is going to be at the absolute lowest we've seen. I think this is maybe a, a good time to buy low. All right, that is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Peacock and Williamson NFL Show. Brian Peacock and former NFL scout, scout Mount Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Check out our podcast, uh, Locked On Dynasty, on YouTube. You can follow Kate at FF Ball Blast. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll see you guys next time.